I've got a confession to make. I'm a greasy, filthy, bald gotcha gamer. Nah, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm not bald, but I used to play Fate Grand Order, I used to play Genshin Impact, and I still play a little bit of Ark Knights. No, I'm not a furry, I swear. Way back in the day when Honkai Star Rail Beta was going on, I thought no shot it would be able to contend with Genshin, right? Genshin is humongous, and its action hack and slash gameplay is more exciting than some boring little turn-based little game. Even if Star Rail didn't flop, I thought I would hate it. Its gameplay looked so simple and brain dead. The only reason why I kept playing something like Ark Knights for this long is because it requires at least a room temp IQ to play. Ark Knights players know the struggle of WD EX8. Since I'm not the biggest fan of turn-based gameplay, I was reluctant to download Star Rail, but I gave it a chance. Release day is always one of the most exciting parts of a gacha game's lifespan. Now, with Mihoyo's past successes with Honkai Impact 3rd and Genshin Impact, a lot of hype was riding on Honkai Star Rail. So did the game deliver? <laughs> Let's just say, when I saw her beautiful face, I knew this game was going to be something special. If we look at the data from Pocket Gamer and Sensor Tower, we see that Star Rail has achieved more than half a billion dollars worldwide, which is a big number to say the least. Star Rail also garnered 20 million downloads upon release, 3 million more than Genshin's first day. This may be in part due to Mihoyo's sparing nothing when it came to advertising. In fact, does this image look familiar? Yeah, it's one of the most iconic shots in film history. Nice to meet you, I'm Natasha, an underworld doctor. Feeling sick? If you've never seen it before, consider yourself lucky. It's safe to say that Honkai Star Rail is a smash hit and an instant success. Time will tell if they can keep up the amazing updates, but I'm here to talk about how this game got so massive and how it sets a completely new standard. I hate to say it, but a little tiny part of me was worried that Star Rail might be janky on launch. Luckily, it ran smoother than a fresh 3-star ping pong ball. It's actually absurd how releasing a complete game on launch has become something to commend. It's almost like people naturally download a game if it's well made. Hmm, no wonder. But even for a gacha game, Star Rail looks absolutely stunning. Check out this attention to detail. Whenever you switch between your skill and basic attack, each character will change their stance. It's a little, seemingly insignificant thing. Mihoyo could have gone away with not having that animation, but it adds so much more life to each character. Every hit is also quite well animated, and the subtle camera shake just adds that extra little bit of force to make each impact more satisfying. You can tell the devs really put the time and effort into making this thing a piece of art. Speaking of devs, actually kind of goaded. Genshin players could only dream of the quality of life changes that Star Rail has been putting out. In every update, major concerns are always addressed. It's pretty rare to see such immaculate dev responsiveness lately. Next, let's look at Honkai Star Rail's gameplay. It's nothing revolutionary, I do have to admit. It's not perfect either. Grinding can be pretty annoying and time consuming, but it's still pretty fun overall. It very much values your time because not everyone is willing to spend hours exploring a new region. Essentially, Star Rail is your standard 4 character party RPG, and each character only has two main actions, a basic attack and the skill. Although these actions can only be performed at sorcery speed, characters also have access to an ultimate that can be used at instant speed. MTG players will understand. Star Rail is very much a pick up and play game that doesn't really require too much thinking. Just pay attention to the game and you should be fine. There's no need to learn an entire boss's moveset and mechanics so that you could find out the exact timings to dodge and land a hit. I don't know if it's just me, but even though you can auto battle, I often find myself wanting to actively play the game. The only time I really auto battle is when I'm busy doing something else. Yes, the gameplay is simple, but it's effective and tickles my brain for some reason. Most of the complexity in Star Rail comes with building your characters and teams. It's fun finding cool signals between characters and trying to get good stats on relics, though frustrating it may be. The best thing Star Rail does is how well it caters to a free-to-play audience, which I am a part of. I don't spend money on microtransactions. Yes, the gacha rates are relatively low, but this game gives you tons of free pulls. In two months, I saved up enough premium currency to hit soft pity on the Kafka banner twice, essentially guaranteeing that I get her. Much like Mihoyo's past games, you can really get away with using anybody. You don't need every meta 5 star to clear the story. In fact, every 4 star is pretty usable in their own right, uh, except for this little dumbass. Uh, you can even use off meta builds, you know, you don't even have to follow all this freaking DPS min maxing. You can run a DPS Luotra if you can run full damage March 7th. You can do whatever you want, really, and that's great. For the real tryhard gamers, though, Star Rail also has Forgotten Hall, which serves as the most difficult endgame content. Similar to Genshin's Spiral Abyss. 
Even though Starreal encourages you to use elemental weaknesses, even that isn't really necessary. You could be like Ash and say, fuck it, we ball, and use electric and wind type characters on a boss that doesn't even have that weakness. You don't even need the best stats either. I remember beating the final boss of the first arc with relics that were all basically level zero. On top of that, I had literally given my Don Hung the physical set because I thought physical damage meant like literally physical. I thought him smacking enemies with a sphere was physical damage. Of course, after that battle, I actually went and tried building my characters properly and now I have a 4k defense Jepard. I'm gonna come hard! And before you say his stats are mid and he needs more speed, shut the hell up, I literally don't need speed. Speed is for the weak. I literally don't even need a healer because of his light cone and an energy regen rope which basically allows me to have a nearly perpetual shield, a healer really isn't even necessary. My boy is stacked for a free to play build. So yeah, the gameplay is solid, simple but effective, and it has a certain layer of complexity when you're trying to build your characters. Now, how does this story hold up? Well, simple but effective seems to be the design philosophy of this game, because that's kind of how I feel about the main story. Uh, for the most part, the game does like to throw around lore terms like Stellarons, Fragmentums, and little void thingies. I get confused at times for a casual player that doesn't really read the lore, but at its core, the story structure is pretty straightforward. The overarching plot is basically like One Piece in Space, the main characters ride on the titular Starreal Express trying to save planets from disastrous Stellarons. But let's dive a little deeper into what makes the story of Starreal so good, especially for a gacha game. I'll be using the first major arc, Yorilo 6, as the case study. Spoilers for this arc, by the way. So what I really like in a story is focus. Instead of trying to do many things at once, just pick a main theme or narrative and run with it. This is why the John Wick franchise has been so successful compared to other movie series that lose focus over time. For Honkai Star Rail's Yorillo 6 arc, the characters are dropped in its frozen, dying world, so they have to find the issue at its core. It's a simple goal, find the Celeron. But then the story adds further conflict and complexity by introducing the strained relationship between the overworlders and the underworlders. We get to see how this divide has torn the city apart and how it's broken past friendships. It's not not just the eternal winter and the fragmentum that's causing all the suffering, it's also the people within the city who are unable to unite. You see, at its core, the Yorillo 6 arc is about perseverance in the face of unending adversity. Kokolia's original goal was to save Bellabog. Preserve it, if you will. Like the devil on her shoulder, the Stellaron urges her to give up and just destroy everything. It tells her there's no point in continuing. Despite Kakolia's strong faith in the preservation, she eventually succumbs to the will of the Stellaron and begins working toward the downfall of Bellabog. But you know, the main characters aren't having it, and so by the end of the first arc, the main character gains access to their preservation form. This represents their defense of the world. This also has to be the greatest battle in all of turn-based gaming history. The power of the Stellaron is with me! You are but cinders of the old I've never felt such immense hype for a genre that I absolutely despise. Like, it's turn-based for fuck's sake, but it feels like an anime. The music, the cutscenes, the action, holy shit. If you told me a gacha game would have one of my favorite battles in gaming, I would have told you you're crazy. I was, I was crazy, crazy once. Unfortunately, even after defeating Kokolia, it doesn't end the winter. Despite everything we've been through, Bellabog isn't completely saved. It's a bittersweet ending. Luckily, with Branya becoming the new leader, she brings with her a new sense of hope. A hope that they can preserve the city they so love. A hope that with enough perseverance and unity, they can overcome any hardship. I personally think the Yorilo 6 arc is beautiful. It's not perfect, it's not the most innovative piece of fiction, it's simple, but effective. What more could I ask? I really thought there was no way for the next arc to top this, but man oh man, it might even be better. It's amazing what happens when the devs really care about writing a good, concise story. Okay, enough about me gushing about the story. The last thing I want to talk about is the psychological tactics that really kept people hooked on this game. We're about to get into some spooky, slightly speculative topics. And I'm not talking about the gacha system here, we all know how that works. I'm talking about other things that made the game insanely addictive. Now, the first thing I want to point out, of course, is Kafka. Mihoyo knew exactly what they were doing when they showed her as the first character in the game. A mature, seductive woman is more than enough to hook us horny gacha gamers. Now, I recognize she isn't everyone's type, but she is a lot of people's type. When I played more of the game, I wondered, why isn't Kafka on any banners? It's because she wasn't going to be released until the 1.2 update. On top of that, Silverwolf, the other tutorial character, wasn't going to be released until the 1.1 update. Teasing these characters in the beginning, only to reveal that you'll have to wait months until you can pull for them, is the ultimate blue ball technique. 
Whether I liked it or not, I was in for the ride until Kafka came out. There's also the fact that Zila is the first featured character, a fan favorite from Honkai Impact 3rd. While Star Rail may have enticed newer audiences with Kafka and Silverwolf, Zila is there for the older Honkai fans. Of course, Zila also happens to be the best single target damage dealer in the game. Oh, and is it a coincidence that many of the bosses in Eurillo 6 have a quantum weakness? Hmm. Suffice it to say, Zila is meta, so how much money did she make for Mihoyo? A lot. A lot of money. Alright, well, there you have it. That's how Honkai Star Rail set an absolute new standard for gacha gaming. Overall, it has amazing gameplay, a banger story, and it used some psychological tactics to make an extra profit, as kind of par for the course, but as a free-to-play gacha gamer, Star Rail is what I've always wanted. Something that actually makes me want to play the game instead of putting it on auto, and a story that has me coming back with each update. In truth, many other gacha games just don't have very engaging combat. After all, the collection aspect is one of the biggest focuses of gacha games, but it's not like I'm looking for a AAA experience. When you'd rather auto battle everything, what's the point of playing anymore? Of course, Star Rail isn't perfect, nothing is, but the game does some pretty great things. If you're not into gacha games, you don't have to play Star Rail, but if you're a greasy, filthy, no grass touching, zero bitches, bald, room temp IQ weeb like me, play my favorite game, RAID SHADOW LEGENDS! Come on.